Hi, everyone. I'm Ana Costa from Portugal, saying a warm hello from my corner. I love the place where I live. It's wonderful. Warm, lots of tourists and everything. But I speak only about my country. These words don't refer to the home where I grew up or the people who I considered my family. Alas, it doesn't. I have two brothers and a sister and a father and a mother, but only my father is considered family to me because he brought me into the house when I was one month old. I am a bastard child, and my father is a big businessman. At first, my mother agreed to raise me as her own, but all my childhood I felt this awful feeling of loneliness, this alienation and birthright. It was as if I lived in this family on credit, eating, sleeping, and dressing on credit. Mom, Santiago, Francisco, and Alice treated me the same way as if I were nothing. My father protected me in front of everyone and gave me lots of gifts, but he was often away. I don't know what I would have done in my mother's place if my husband had brought a baby into the house and said she was going to live with us, but I genuinely felt good about the family. I always wanted to be a part of it, to receive affection and care from my mother like everyone else, but that didn't happen. One time, my mother took me with her on a trip to visit her friend. We got on the train, and Mom said she was thirsty. I'll get something and come back. You wait for me here. But she didn't come back. The train was leaving, and Mom wasn't there. And then I saw her running from the station without looking back. I froze in shock. The conductor came up to me and asked where my parents were. I said that my mother had gone out to get a drink and that she was coming back. Then I was told that the train was leaving in ten seconds and was asked to get off and wait for her outside. I got out, and a crowd of people formed around me. I didn't understand anything. Mom had gone to get a drink. She'll be back. You just have to wait for her, and she'd come back for me. But she didn't come back in ten minutes or two hours. I waited for a total of four hours at that station, afraid to go anywhere but I still hoped she'd come back and get me. But I was wrong. The local police found me when I was freezing cold because it was winter. They took me to the station, warmed me up, and then questioned me. Because of my father's popularity, they found him quickly. He came to pick me up half an hour later from the other side of town. That night, he had a big fight with my mother. I'll never forget the words she said. She'll never be related to me. I tried, I did, but it didn't work out. She's not my daughter. I realized that I had no chance in that family. My brothers and sister only took advantage of my mother's position. They hurt me any chance they got. When I got tired of taking it all, I went up to my father and told him some important news. Dad, I'm moving out of the house. What? Where? Where will you live? I'm getting an apartment away from this place. You can't. You're 14 years old. I've already made all the arrangements. I won't charge you any money. I started a startup six months ago, and it's growing. That's enough money for me alone. But thank you for everything. I'll come and visit you from time to time. It was my first step into adulthood. While my peers were picking out presents for themselves for Christmas and birthdays, I was working on a project called Anacostas, like an anaconda, a giant snake. I produced cosmetics. I entered the market in six months, and after two years, I opened branches in two countries. I was in the press. I was on TV. I had an army of people working for me, and I had a loyal assistant named Thomas. I adored him. He was devoted not only to the work, but also to me, even though he was sometimes cautious. While the business thrived, I bought a place, cars, and expensive dresses. While I was growing up, no one talked to me except my father. He often offered to help, to finance me, but I refused. I wanted to achieve everything on my own, so I did. Two years later, I blossomed even more. On my 18th birthday, my father gave me one million dollars. I didn't want to take the gift, but he insisted and I put it into circulation for the business. Then I got an invitation to a family dinner and reluctantly went. The whole family was seated at the table. Dad congratulated me on opening another big branch in town. 
I thanked him and invited him to come there for the official opening. My brothers and sister immediately said they wanted to be there to get some press coverage. I didn't say anything, but Dad asked for it in person. Mom wants to be there too. We'd like to be happy for you. You're the only one in our family who has a successful business at your age. Please let us be at the opening. And Mom, why doesn't she say anything? Ugh, it doesn't matter. Since you're asking, Father, come, but there will be no separate speech about the family. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have no appetite. I'm going home. Just before I left, my mother came running after me. She looked at me and handed me a glass of juice. Please, at least have some juice. You haven't eaten anything, and I made you dinner. You don't have to act so thoughtful. It doesn't suit you. Anna, wait. Don't go. I know you won't believe me, but I do want to make things right. You're right to point it out, but I won't believe it. But just to be polite, I'll have some juice. <sighs> Thank you. See you tomorrow. I left the house and finally exhaled. Those visits were getting harder and harder. I had my best dress ready and woke up in the morning not knowing what awaited me. In the mirror, I saw, not myself, but some kind of spotty monster. The skin on my face and body was covered with red spots. What was it? I looked at my body with horror. There wasn't a single white spot. My body was covered with red patches and strange bumps in some places. I was so ugly. How could I hold a store opening in a video like that? I was the face of my cosmetics. I was supposed to be talking about how wonderful she was. And now what? Why now? I hid my face under a mask and a cap and went to work. Thomas almost fainted. I immediately showed him my hand so that there would be no questions asked. He gave me a glass of water, and I took the mask and cap off in my office. Guests were already gathering, and I was crushed. Thomas was cursing, and I was uncomfortable as it was. Did you eat something? Have you been drinking? No, just the usual. I eat in the same restaurants, you know? God, God, the last time you had those spots was when you drank a sage drink from Switzerland in the healer. No, you walked around with skin like that for a week. What do we do? What did you say earlier? That you walked around like that for a week? No, before that. That you had those sage spots in Switzerland. Sage? My mom gave me some juice yesterday. And it hit me. This witch decided to give me a breakdown for the event. Well, no, I wasn't giving up that easily. Thomas held the opening in my place, saying I was sick. It went great, and I watched everything on video. But I was still disappointed. I was so prepared for this day. I saw my family in the crowd and decided I wouldn't forgive my mother. It was her birthday in a week. I'd just been home at that time and the spots were gone. I went to her birthday party and pretended to be drunk. I was rude to the guests and broke a couple of plates. My mom cried at the end and my dad took me out to talk. I told him it was just revenge and left. Spoiling her birthday party was an easy thing to do, and it was Alice who gave me the idea. At first I questioned why she was helping me, and my sister confessed that her mom had paid her boyfriend not to date her anymore, so she was mad at her too. It was a temporary collaboration. When I got to the car, my mom grabbed my arm demanding an explanation, and I yelled at her, What? Are you ashamed of me? It's just revenge, Mom. You came to my store opening pretending you cared. You don't even care about my existence. Since when are you interested in me? What do you want to get? What are you talking about, daughter? I'm not your daughter. You ditched me on a train. You wanted me out of your life. And even now you slipped me sage, knowing I'm allergic to it. What sage? What are you talking about? Don't pretend, Mom. I turned away from my mom and got in the car, and that's when some drunk driver crashed into it. We rammed into three other parked cars. I don't remember anything else. I woke up when Thomas was sitting next to me. He told me that my mom and dad hadn't left my side the whole time. It was hard to believe that mom was there with me. 
I wanted to set up the internet for you, so I called my phone and left it on the table and took the other one with me into the hallway to hear if your favorite music was playing on the TV. It turned out that at that moment, your mother walked in. She was crying so hard, praying for you to live. Really? That's not like her. She was heartbroken. She wouldn't leave your side. I just sent her home 30 minutes ago to rest. Then why did she slip me sage? What if it wasn't her? Then who would have done it? I have a hunch, but you have to play along. I pretended to still be unconscious, as Thomas asked. Alice, Francisco, and Santiago came into my room. They were joking and laughing. The assistant left his phone and listened to the conversation on the other, recording everything on a tape recorder. My brother said that I was pathetic and that I'd never be in their family as my own. Santiago then took something out of his pocket and slipped it into my glass. Now she's going to be even more stained. While she's here, I put sage in all her shampoos, water bottles, anywhere I could think of. It was a good idea to get her drunk before the opening, to embarrass her. I opened my eyes and the three of them almost fell over. Thomas came into the room and showed them a tape of their conversation. Four minutes later, my father arrived, and I gloated. It's not hard to guess how it ended. My relationship with my mom changed, and my relationship with my dad got even better. And those three were punished very harshly, leaving them without any money or cars. I think that's fair, don't you? Tell me guys, did you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Don't forget to like it, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.